Chapter Two, The Rose. Hello, is anybody there? There was no reply. That's very strange. A wonderful castle like this, but nobody in it. Perhaps there is someone upstairs. The farmer went up the grand staircase and into the rooms upstairs. He opened a door into a small room. It was warm inside. There was a big fire with a comfortable chair in front of it. He saw a table with a meal on it, and a bed ready to slip in. The farmer sat down and ate the meal. Then he went over to the bed. He was very tired, and he went to sleep immediately. The next morning, he woke up with the sun shining on his face. At first, he didn't remember where he was. Then he saw the table with breakfast on it, hot, fresh coffee, sweet bread rolls, jam, fruit, and fresh cream. He ate the breakfast and then looked around the room. In the corner, there was a jug of hot water, soap, and a towel. Well, I need a wash. It's true, but who did all this? He washed and then left the room. He walked along the long hallways and down the stairs. Again, he called out, "Hello, is anybody there?" Again, there was no answer. Well, somebody knows I'm here, but who? And how can I say thank you for the kindness, the food and bed? Ah, well, never mind. Maybe one day a poor traveler will come to my door. I will certainly do the same thing for him. Now I must go. My daughters are waiting for me. He went to get his horse from the stables, which were across the garden. The garden was beautiful, lovely green grass and flowers of every color. He suddenly remembered his promise to Beauty to bring her a rose. At that moment, he saw something in the middle of a flower bed. Just look at that rose! I've never seen anything so beautiful in all my life. The rose was pink, but inside it, there was a golden light. It was so bright that he thought, "It cannot be real. It must be magic. It is a perfect present for Beauty." He put his hand forward to pick the rose. Leave it alone! A terrible voice shouted at him. "Who do you think you are? I give you everything a poor trouble needs, and you steal my rose!" What a noise! The ground shook under the farmer's feet. He turned his head, and he saw it. It was on two legs, like a human, but it was taller than any human. It was covered with fur, long dark fur. It had gigantic paws. And horrible long ears, but the worst thing was the face, the horrible, ugly face. It had eyes like a wolf, and two big horns. The face was angry and fierce, and the voice—ah, the voice, the voice of a human, but the sound of a wild lion. The farmer was very scared. I'm very sorry. I didn't want to upset you, and you're right. You have done everything to make me welcome in your home. So, in return, you steal. I, I'm so, so sorry, but the rose wasn't for me. I did it for someone very special, someone with a heart of gold. And who is that? It's my youngest daughter, Beauty. Now the beast was quieter and calmer, but still, when he spoke, the farmer was afraid. Why do you call her Beauty? Because she is the most beautiful girl in the whole world, and her heart is as lovely as her face. Please, I beg you, forgive me, and let me go to her. I will let you go to her, but you must bring her back to me. I'm looking for someone with a very good heart. Bring me your daughter, and you will live. Oh no! I cannot ask my beauty to give her a life the same mine. Please, no! I'm so sorry about the rose. Did you hear me? Go, bring beauty to me. Now the farmer was terrified. Yes, I. Quiet. You have one week. You must be back here in one week with your daughter Beauty. She must come here because she wants to come. And don't bring another daughter. I want Beauty. If you don't come back with her, I will find you and kill you. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, I hear you. Now take the rose to beauty and go.